Just back to interest rates and inflation for a minute. Um, do you think part of the reason why Philip Lowe is going so hard is because he doesn't want high inflation to be part of his legacy? And, and he doesn't look like he's going to be there for a lot longer. No, his term finishes in September and clearly he was never going to be reappointed. And uh, Prime Minister Albanese is less than subtle criticism of him at an economic... Uh, in fact, a Sky-sponsored economic uh, uh, seminar yesterday, Friday means he's out. Look, Philip, uh, the, the, the Reserve Bank Governor made the same mistakes that all other central bankers made post-COVID. Uh, they all underestimated. And, and, and I, I feel a degree of sympathy for the RBA, not, not for the, the mispronouncements of uh, low interest rates, interest rates not going up until 2024. But this government is not running an anti-inflation economic policy. Mm. Look at their wages policy. Um, what Wages are beginning to explode uh, because of the support of the government with the Fair Work Commission. Have a look at this budget spending. It's all inflationary. So the Reserve Bank is trying to curtail inflation and the government is running a, an in, in inflationary budget. Yeah, I find the PR and media around it from from a media perspective having done it for a long time the language uh, a, a couple of years ago when we were talking about it here with this no interest rate rises to 2024 and australians lots of australians have been led straight into the mud so and uh, unfortunately uh, the prime minister jumped on the on the bandwagon yesterday by having a go at, at the reserve bank governor prime ministers never should tim by all means, you as a commentator or even myself or anyone in the streets mm. entitled to, to whack uh, the Reserve Bank for getting it so very wrong. But the Prime Minister should not weaken the institution because that, that just weakens confidence in the Reserve Bank and anybody who follows Philip Lowe as Governor of the Reserve Bank will be quite shaken by the, uh, the politicisation Who'd want that job? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very different... Now, no, let's go overseas uh, because the whole Donald Trump uh, melodrama saga, look, we, we can call it that, but it's too serious now um, to laugh at because this latest indictment, and we've been leading our news with it this morning, is heavy. Uh, no question. This is a serious setback for Donald Trump. By the way, I, I watched your report at, at the beginning of the hour and that Annalise Nielsen, I've always regarded her as the best Australian... US correspondent because she's objective. Yeah. She, she presents the news. Unfortunately, American uh, Australian journalists in Washington get captured and they feel they've got to take one side or the other. So you're getting the facts on Sky for sure. Um, look, it, it is a bigger setback than I thought and it would explain, Tim, why so many Republican candidates are now nominating for the presidency. I think they believe Trump... What about Christie? He had a massive crowd. Chris Christie... Mike Pence, Nikki Haley, mm. Don, um, Ron DeSantis. I think they're all jumping in because they believe Trump will be unable to be uh, the candidate for the Republican Party. If Trump does front up to the Republican convention in July next year, he's still the hot favourite. Yeah, absolutely. Good to talk, as always. Thanks, Tim.